Yo, partnership alert, partnership alert, partnership alert. Living Corporate has a partnership with LinkedIn Learning, an American massive open online course provider that provides video courses taught by industry experts across a wide array of subjects. Now, the partnership is because Living Corporate has courses on LinkedIn Learning focused on diversity, equity, inclusion for leaders, career professionals, and anyone really looking to upskill themselves and be better allies. So make sure you check out our courses on LinkedIn Learning by clicking the link in the show notes. And let's just say you don't want to do that. You go to LinkedIn Learning on LinkedIn, search Live in Corporate. We'll be right there. All right. Peace. What's up, y'all? It's Zach. We live in corporate. And this week we have a shorter episode. Really excited just to quickly talk to you all about this past year and talk to you about what December looks like. Right. So what do I mean when I say talk about this past year? I mean, look, yo, like it's December. It feels like January was just like last week, but January was dang near 12 months ago. Right. <laughs> and as I think about like my personal year, Right. In terms of like me continuing to grow as a father, uh, my pivot away from consulting, the resignation that I sent um, to my former CEO (laughs) and the resignation email I sent to my immediate supervisors, uh, both phenomenally written, by the way. One day we'll talk about a little bit more. Maybe one day I'll read them on the podcast. I don't know. Uh, they're phenomenal. Though. They're genuinely great emails. I mean, really, like if you were to think about like a resignation, email, I mean, it was poetic. It was factual. It was it was it was it was great. Um, anyway, um, resignations, um, shoot, transition to the new job. And then like interspersed with that, like the feature on CBS this morning to working with a global pharmaceutical company for a branding campaign to working with a couple of other organizations for some campaigns and really understanding and actualizing on the value of living corporate as a media network uh, to building our network and great creating new podcasts and creating new live shows and um, really building a team of independent teams all under living corporate as an umbrella um, and building and maintaining quite frankly, a very diverse suite of relationships. Um, It's been a journey. It's been a journey Uh, to losing my step grandparents, to losing a cousin in law, to um, watching Emery learn how to sing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. She's a great, great, great vocalist, y'all. To seeing old friends, to realizing that certain friends were never your friends. It's just been a journey. And I'm sure if you are listening to this and you think about your year, you've gone through a lot. So I want you to pause and give yourself credit for making it this far. For real. It's important. It's important. You know, so often uh, we we work in these systems that just ask you to produce and produce and produce, frankly, for everybody else. But, the you know, the future uh, of you. Right. Like if you think about a sustainable version of yourself is not a version that is always working for someone else. Right. It's not like that's not a sustainable way to exist. And so it's important that you pause and you consider what it is you need for you creating space for yourself. I'll tell you, you know, one of the best things I did this year was really getting intentional about my own mental health and talking to a therapist on a regular basis. Right. Having space to dedicate to yourself to engage and work with yourself and having someone guide you through that is important, especially for black men. You know, we're we are as a group. I, we're, we're, we're just not fluent. We're not conversant in vulnerability. Uh, we're not conversant in engaging our own insecurities and we're not conversant in like deep accountability or boundary setting or you know, really like engaging the harms that we may enact on someone else. And there's a lot of different reasons for that, right? Like between like, like just the complex role we play and participate in with the patriarchy to our own oppression as um, black men in a white supremacist culture and world uh, to our desire to 
participate in white supremacy by like gathering resources and hoarding things and oppressing others, right? Like, I mean, there's just a, there's a lot of reasons for that, right? So I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not aiming to like make that. Po- this is not that conversation, but I'm just saying, like, you know, it's important. We owe it to ourselves to like really engage. Um, and talk to someone who can help us from a, from a mental health perspective, a mental wellness perspective. It's, it's just, it's super critical, you know, and again, shout out to that end, shout out to the break room. Um, and shout out to the platforms that are really focused and shout out to let's talk, bruh, like for real, Jeremy, much love to you, man. Um, but yeah, look, it's just important y'all. Like I'm really thankful that I was able to get to that point. You know, your body keeps the score. You know, I, I, I'm really bad at creating boundaries for myself and, slowing down and giving myself space to breathe. And frankly, I don't consider myself enough. I'm always thinking about someone else to a fault, to a fault. Um, I'm just really thankful for the people in my life who love me. Um, not, not for the things I do for them, but truly love me for who I am. I cared enough. They cared enough about me to encourage me to, to talk to somebody. And that's been generally one of the best decisions I've ever made. You know, the other thing I realized in this season is that it's going to be, it's rare. You know, for me, you know, I'm, I'm not going to speak for the whole world. I don't want to sound overly pessimistic. It's rare to found, find people who really care about you. Right. Because the world is so jacked up and everyone has so many authentic issues that are genuinely their own. They just don't have the space to care about you. Right. And that doesn't mean that they're maliciously against you. They just don't care about you like they just don't care about you. That's just the case. And so when you find people who, in spite of all of their trauma and responsibilities and obligations, who can still make the time to care about you, yo, that's a person you want to keep. I think so many times like we want to like, there's people that we want them to care about us, but they might not necessarily care about us. Like be thankful for the people that care about you, even if those aren't the people that you want to care about you. Because I'm telling you, it's rare to find folks who genuinely care about you, right? And that group of folks who genuinely care about you, that's your tribe. And those are the people that you should really be investing your time and your energy into because they care about you. It's a cold world out here. So you want to make sure that again, the relationships you're building are intentional in that way and that you're, you're being poured into. Again, I'm a bad example of this because I pour into a lot and I don't necessarily get a lot of things poured back into me, right? And so it's important that like you just prioritize the relationships that are reciprocal, right? It's just, it's rare, y'all. It's rare. And if those who know, know. Anyway, all of that being said, as we look at December, I'm excited about the discussions that we're going to be having. We're going to bring back some old guests. We're going to talk about their year. We're going to reflect on living corporate and talk about our journey. We're going to talk a bit about just like, you know, where living corporate is going. And we're also going to give our network a bit of a break, right? It's been a lot going on. Like, <laughs> yo, it's a lot. Like, it's a lot. Like those who are really like around here, shout out to the, our, our listeners, shout out to our network, shout out to our community. Y'all know we produce content every day over here, right? Like there's something happening every day between the group chat, the break room, living corporate's flagship pod, the access point, our blog, liberated love notes, the leadership rates. There's just a lot of content happening all the time. And so I'm excited about getting everyone's space, right? I don't want to be part of the problem when it comes to this, like addiction to production, right? So I want to make sure we all have space to like breathe, rest, recharge, and then come back. And so, you know, you're going to hear more from me over the next month or so. You're going to hear more of these conversations, uh, more of these monologues, but also more more dialogues. Um, Hopefully we can have uh, we have some special guests coming soon. I ain't going to really announce them just yet, but I'm really excited about just like our lineup. And I'm excited about having you here. I pray that uh, this holiday season is a blessing for you. Um, I recognize that holidays are different for everybody. And so I hope that you get what you need out of the season, whatever that may be. And uh, I appreciate you. So, listen, we're going to tap in with Tristan. And after we tap in with Tristan, we're going we gonna to end it. All right. So, again, short pod today. Next week, we got some stuff for you. The week after that, we got some stuff for you. The week after that, we got some stuff for you. All right. So enjoy yourself. Take care of yourself. I love y'all. Peace.
What's going on Living Corporate? It's Tristan, and I want to thank you for tapping back in with me as I provide some tips and advice for professionals. Today, let's talk about four hiring trends you should know if you plan on applying to jobs in 2022. The pandemic led to the Great Resignation, creating a job seekers market. This mass exodus has forced employees to contend with whether or not they are doing enough to keep their employees happy and attract new talent. This gives job applicants more power to negotiate for the salary and benefits they desire. While companies are doing everything they can to attract ideal candidates, everything that glitters isn't gold. Don't get blinded by all the extras that may come with a certain company. A company having good perks doesn't mean they have a great culture and it's on you to figure out the truth. Make sure to develop a couple of questions to uncover how you will be treated as an employee. Questions like, how does the company handle work-life balance? And how does the company prioritize creating a culture that ensures all employees feel seen, heard, and valued? Since we are still in the middle of a pandemic, vaccination status will be factored into hiring decisions. While people are trying to politicize COVID-19 vaccinations, more employers see a mandate as a no-brainer since passing the virus around in the office could severely impact productivity and profits. According to a recent survey by Resume Builder, 33% of hiring managers say they will automatically eliminate resumes that don't include a COVID-19 vaccination status. Therefore, job seekers need to consider listing their vaccination status on their hiring documents. If you aren't comfortable with that, you should focus on positions that don't have a requirement. Lastly, the pandemic allowed many people to work from home and led many companies to realize the advantages of their employees working remotely. So now, instead of top jobs being concentrated in major metropolitan areas like New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, and others, companies are letting go of physical offices, allowing hiring to become less location dependent. This tip was brought to you by Tristan of Layfield Resume Consulting. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Layfield Resume, or connect with me, Tristan Layfield, on LinkedIn.